Thousands of years ago, a group of sorcerers from the Dark Empire of Acheron created a mask using the skulls of dead kings. Then they sacrificed their daughters to the dark gods in order to give the mask dark power. Afterward they went out to enslave the civilized world, killing any person that dared to get on their path. Only the barbarian tribes were left to rise up against them, and during a very violent and bloody battle, the leader of the Sumerians Karin defeated the sorcerers and destroyed the mask. Then each tribe kept a mask shard so nobody could use it, but a prophecy said someone would try to put all the pieces together again. Eventually Acheron fell as well. Some years later, the Sumerians are at war with a rival clan. In the middle of the battle, Karin's pregnant wife is fatally injured, but when Karin finds her, she asks him to open her stomach so she can give birth to the baby, who she names Conan before she dies. Because he was born on a battlefield, Conan's birth is considered to be a powerful omen. Years pass, and Conan becomes a very fierce teenager, but he also can be quite scattered. In the morning that all the tribe's teens take the test to see if they can become warriors, Conan arrives late, but Karin lets him join anyway. All the boys run into the forest to get an egg and push each other to make the competition lose, breaking other eggs and not caring if anyone falls and gets hurt. Suddenly, a group of strangers appears among the trees and begins going after the boys. Most of the teens run back to their tribe, but Conan wants to prove himself and stays. An enemy takes the chance to throw his bolas at Conan and makes him fall, then all the savage warriors surround him. Another guy grabs Conan by the hair and tries to take him away, but Conan immediately defends himself and with a few hits, he knocks the man down. He doesn't stop there, he then steals a weapon from the enemy and continues to fight without mercy, violently killing each guy until he's alone in the forest with a bunch of bodies. Moments later, Conan returns to the tribe carrying the heads of his enemies in his hands and the egg from the trial in his mouth. Since Conan's a warrior now, Karin takes him to his foundry and teaches him how to make a sword. The first try breaks, then Karin reveals the forging secrets of the family so Conan can make an actually good sword and start training. Conan is very temperamental and lets his anger get in the way of his learning, making it easy for his dad to defeat him with tricks. Karin also tells Conan he's not ready to have such a sword yet. Sometime later, Conan is alone in the forest and sees a bunch of armored warriors with the symbol of a two-headed serpent ride by. These men make it to the tribe and start a brutal fight against the barbarians, with both sides killing warriors all over the place. The strangers also have very talented archers that kill en masse and warriors that destroy the buildings using rocks on fire. Conan comes from the forest to join the fight and Karin is distracted by trying to reach him, giving the enemy the chance to knock him down. Conan sneaks around and discovers his dad has been taken to the foundry to meet the enemy leader Zim, who demands Karin's mask piece as he reveals he has all the other shards already. When Karin refuses, he is restrained and hurt to try to make him talk. Furious, Conan jumps in and attacks a warrior named Lucius, managing to cut off the man's nose. Karin uses the chance to attack too, but there are too many warriors and soon father and son are overpowered. Afterward, Karin is chained to a cauldron of molten metal hanging above him, and Zim keeps poking it to burn Karin while Conan is forced to watch. Zim also brings his daughter Marik, who uses her magic powers to find the mask shard hidden in a box under a floorboard. Now he has what he wants, Zim sets fire to the foundry and hits Karin's legs before poking at the cauldron again, causing Conan to run and grab the chains to stop the cauldron from killing his dad. Marik steals Karin's sword and Zim adds the last shard to the mask to finally complete it, promising his daughter that he'll use it to bring his mother back. In the foundry, Karin tells Conan to leave him because he can't save him, but since Conan refuses, Karin ends things for himself so Conan can escape. With his hands hurt from the chains, Conan leaves the building and grieves for his affiliated tribe before taking a sword from the pile of bodies as he swears revenge. Twenty years later, Conan is now a mercenary. He works with a pirate named Artis, and together they raid a slave camp. They start by rolling a bunch of rocks down the mountain to heavily damage the camp, then they jump in to fight hand to hand and kill every slave owner they can find. Conan is a very talented warrior and nobody can land a single hit on him. Afterward they take the survivors to the city of Messendia for a celebration full of music, women, and alcohol. Suddenly, a bunch of men with the snake symbol arrives at the party, and Conan notices they're led by Captain Lucius. They seem to be looking for something, and Conan realizes they're after a pickpocket named Allah Shan. Conan grabs Allah Shan and attacks a guard before handing himself in on purpose because he wants to learn more about his enemy. Soon Conan and Allah Shan are taken to a dirty prison where criminals are put to work. Conan is left in chains, and when a guard makes fun of him, he jumps in and starts another fight, hurting the guards until they reveal where Lucius is hiding. Then Conan uses the guard's head to gain access to the captain's quarters, where he begins fighting even more guards, killing them to the delight of the prisoners that are watching. Next, Conan grabs Lucius and begins hurting him until he accepts to talk. Apparently Zim has become a powerful shadow lord and nowadays he's looking for the pure blood descendant of the sorcerers of Acheron, since he needs their blood to unlock the mask's true power. Once Lucius tells him where to find Zim, Conan makes him swallow his key before taking him outside as he announces to the prisoners they're free now, they just need to get the key from Lucius' stomach. Soon a huge crowd of furious men descends on Lucius to kill him. 
Conan makes his way out and Allah Shan tells him where to find him if he ever needs him to return the favor. When Conan reunites with Artis, he asks him to let him work on his revenge alone. Meanwhile at a monastery, the elder priest Fasher tells Tamara he's had a vision of a warrior that will come to take her to her birthplace. Suddenly an army of snake cult soldiers arrives led by Zim and an older Marik, who attack the monastery in search of the pure blood. As a huge vehicle destroys the town's walls, panic takes over the town and people try to escape, but Zim's men are merciless and kill anyone on their path. Tamara wants to help defend the town and throws some hits of her own, but Fasher finds her and asks her to leave in a carriage that uses the snake symbol as a cover. In the forest nearby, Conan sees the carriage and believes it to be the enemy because of the snake. He rides after them and once he's close enough, he jumps on the roof and breaks it to find Tamara. She tries to stab him with her knife while the archers begin shooting arrows at him, but Conan dodges them all before jumping back onto the horse to have a sword fight with a snake soldier named Ramo that is caught up to them. There are also soldiers attacking the carriage, so Tamara leaves her seat, and after dangerously hanging on the edge for a few seconds, she kicks off the driver and takes over the carriage. When a soldier tries to come closer, she disconnects the carriage, causing it to come off and crash on the road to delay the soldiers. Conan comes closer too and cuts a horse's reins to catch a soldier and drag him through the ground until he's dead. Tamara jumps on a horse to ride away faster and Ramo immediately goes after her, attacking her horse to make her fall. At that moment Conan jumps off his own horse and grabs some chains from a nearby structure, using them to knock out the soldier that had been following him. More soldiers soon arrive and Conan fights them all at the same time, killing them one by one without mercy. Then Conan reveals his identity to Ramo, who gets scared and rides away. Back in town, Marik is checking all the women from the temple to find the pure blood. Losing patience, Marik kills one of the women and hurts the others, always tasting their blood to discover none of them are who they're looking for. Then the guards bring Fasher, who says no pure blood is left, however Zim doesn't believe him. Then Zim shares the story of how he and Marik had to watch his wife be lashed and set aflame by Fasher's order. However Fasher defends this incident, explaining that Zim's wife had been a crazy fanatic that wanted power to conquer the land. Hearing this makes Zim snap and he proceeds to bash Fasher's head on the temple floor. At that moment a guard informs Zim that Ramo is still going after a woman, and Zim reaches the conclusion she must be the pureblood. Back in the forest, Conan chases after Ramo until he's close enough to kill him and make him fall off the horse, knocking him out. Afterward Conan guesses that Tamara is the one Zim is looking for, and Tamara thinks Conan is the guy from Fasher's vision, so she demands to be taken to her homeland. When night falls, Conan keeps Tamara tied up just in case she wants to escape since he wants to use her to attract Zim. When Tamara asks too many questions, Conan shuts her up by putting some cloth in her mouth. The next morning, Ramo wakes up and tells Conan that Tamara is the last pure blood from Acheron. He offers Conan a big reward for her, but instead Conan ties Ramo to his horse and makes him guide him to Zim. After lots of traveling, they finally reach Zim's camp, where they find a bunch of abandoned catapults. Conan ties Ramo to one of them and covers his mouth with the same cloth before catapulting him, causing Ramo to die when he crashes right into Zim's giant vehicle. Marik checks on the body and finds the piece of cloth with a message from Conan asking Zim to meet. Using her magic on the cloth, Marik confirms Tamara is with him. Moments later, Zim and Conan meet at an abandoned outpost. Tamara is tied to a post but it's only for show since she has her knife in her hands. Zim tries to buy Tamara, but Conan demands a fight. Suddenly Marik also shows up and uses her magic to make soldiers out of sand that immediately begin attacking Conan. It's very hard for him to fight them because they keep on dodging his blows by fusing with the sand on the ground, and soon Conan is knocked down. Then the Sandmen begin throwing their weapons at Conan, who immediately begins running away. One of the Sandmen also approaches Tamara, who quickly frees herself with a knife and hits the Sandman before running as well. Conan climbs the building as high as possible and when the Sandmen come after him, Conan acts fast and pushes them to the ground, where they're smashed back into grains of sand. There's a Sandman going after Tamara that makes her fall through various wooden platforms, but before he can reach her, Conan destroys him just in time. There's one last Sandman left, but now Conan manages to recover his sword and destroys it in seconds. Afterwards Zim comes to fight Conan directly in a sword duel. At first they seem to be nearly evenly matched, but after Conan reveals his identity, Marik uses the chance to poison Conan with a poison-laced boomerang dagger. Now that Conan is feeling weak, it's easy for Zim to overpower him and throw him on the ground over and over. When there's an opening, Tamara drags Conan away and throws a torch at some spilled oil to cause an explosion that stops Zim from following them. Then Tamara and Conan stand on the outer wall and wait for Artis to show up on a ship, so the duo jumps into the water to be rescued. Later in the evening, everyone is sleeping on the ship when suddenly the snake cult attacks. Conan, Artis, and the crew immediately spring into action and fight the soldiers, killing every man that dares to look for Tamara. Conan in particular lets his inner rage take over, reminding his enemies of what they did to his tribe before killing them. As more and more soldiers are thrown overboard, Tamara tries her best to defend herself, killing a few men as well. After lots of effort, sweat, and blood, 
the crew wins the fight and now can keep sailing in peace. Eventually the ship makes it to Zim's kingdom, and Conan announces he's leaving alone. However after he's gone, Artis reveals Conan forgot the map, so Tamara takes it to him. Conan and Tamara are having a hard time saying goodbye and they end up kissing. Then they go to the nearest cave so they can spend a few hours getting frisky with each other. Once Conan has fallen asleep, Tamara starts making her way back to the ship, but in the middle of the forest she's ambushed by Marik and her men, who immediately capture her. By the time Conan comes looking for her, they're already gone. Moments later, Marik takes Tamara to see Zim and tastes her blood to confirm Tamara is a pure-blood descendant of the necromancers of Acheron. Meanwhile Conan goes to the city of thieves to look for Allah Shan. He enters a tavern and when the owner doesn't want to answer his questions, Conan attacks him. Thankfully Allah Shan shows up then and stops Conan before things escalate, he's also ready to pay Conan back for freeing him from jail. Sometime later, they make it to Zim's fortress, and Conan has brought Allah Shan to find a way to sneak in. They discover that beneath the fortress is an old mine, so Allah Shan manages to open the doors to the underground tunnels with his special master key. The duo comes down some stairs and discovers the whole area is flooded and full of skeletons, so they need to be careful. Suddenly a huge snake grabs Allah Shan and drags him underwater, so Conan has to swim quickly to kill the snake with his sword and free his friend. Meanwhile Marik dresses Tamara in her mother's clothes, then Tamara is tied down to a special contraption for the upcoming ritual. Eventually Conan and Allah Shan come out in a pool inside a room full of caged slaves and a guard that freaks out as soon as he sees them. The guy quickly releases a bunch of slaves near the pool, and this causes various tentacles to suddenly come out of the water. Allah Shan runs to hide in a cage while soldiers show up to deal with the intruders, but many of them are caught and killed by the tentacles too. Conan fights the guards while dodging the tentacles while a frustrated guard pulls at the chains to make Allah Shan's cage move so it can act as bait. He tries to open the cage with the key, but he accidentally drops it and he doesn't know how to pick locks the normal way. Conan goes to fight the guard to gain control of the chains, and as they exchange a bunch of hits, Conan wraps the chain around the guard's body before hitting him with a mace to send him into the water. The monster immediately attacks the guard and eats his legs, so when Conan pulls him again with the chains, the guard makes for a bleeding decoration. Now Conan can jump on Allah Shan's cage and finally free him before they run away. After crossing the various corridos, the duo makes it to the balcony and discovers Tamara is being taken to Skull Cave. Conan tells Allah Shan that he repaid his debt and continues alone. Night has fallen by the time Conan makes it to Skull Cave. While Conan fights a few guards to get closer to the ritual, Zim is hurting Tamara to get her blood on the mask. Now that horns on the side are moving magically and after Zim puts it on, he tries to revive his dead wife. At that moment Conan shows up and attacks Zim before he can finish the spell. Suddenly the whole cave starts to shake and crumble down. The rest of the cult members run away, but the contraption with Tamara falls into the abyss. Fortunately the sticks on the sides make it get stuck on the walls, and Conan jumps after her to save her. However Zim comes as well and begins another sword duel with Conan while standing on the contraption. The men exchange a few blows and when the entire cave shakes again, the contraption slips and is left hanging on its side, so Conan has to grab on Tamara's chains not to fall. Zim does the same thing and begins spinning the contraption, but this gives Conan the chance to reach Tamara and finally free her. While Tamara runs away, Conan and Zim keep on fighting until they fall. The contraption quickly follows them and crashes on their spot, but both men jump out of the way just in time. Meanwhile Marik follows the smell of Tamara's blood to find her, and the women start a fight as well. Conan hears Tamara calling his name and goes after her while Zim follows him. At that moment Tamara manages to punch Marik on the face and throw her against the wall before fleeing. However Marik can still smell her blood and easily finds her again, then she uses a chain and a rock to try to kill her. Luckily Conan shows up and stops her by cutting her hand off, then Tamara pushes Marik off to her death. Afterward Conan and Tamara try to escape, but a column crumbles and causes them to split. Conan keeps moving and bumps into Zim, who admits he's using Karin's blade. Hearing this, a furious Conan uses his bare hands to retrieve the sword that belongs to him, and since Zim has two other swords anyway, they restart their fight by dual wielding. A fierce duel ensues but this time, Conan easily overpowers Zim, to the point where he drops a sword and decides to keep fighting only with his father's blade. Soon Conan is disarming Zim and pushing him against a wall, where he's blocked by falling debris. Then Conan reunites with Tamara and they run out of the cave while it's revealed Zim is still alive. When he finds the body of his daughter, he is devastated and yells that he'll have revenge. Conan and Tamara are running through a bridge, but suddenly a wooden board breaks and Tamara falls through the hole. Luckily Conan grabs her chains just in time and saves her, however Zim shows up and finishes the spell to summon his dead wife. The spirit of the old witch begins possessing Tamara's body, and she begs Conan to let her go. When Conan refuses, Zim makes fun of him for being stuck in the same situation again, but Conan uses his sword to cut the bridge and makes Zim fall to his death. This immediately interrupts the spell and Tamara goes back to normal. Afterward, Conan finishes pulling Tamara up and they escape from the cave safely. With the snake cult destroyed, 
Conan returns Tamara to her birthplace, telling her that they'll meet again someday before leaving. Sometime later, Conan returns to his old village to show his father's grave that he's finally worthy of the sword. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.